With a few days in Japan, I'll be eating and sightseeing my way through Tokyo and my favorite day trip location, Kamakura. I started off at Marukita at Tsukiji Market for some sashimi, kaisen don or sashimi over rice, must have if you're in Tsukiji, unagi, and grilled fish. This market is the perfect place to visit when I have a lot of food cravings. Containing a mix of both wholesale and retail stores, you're spoiled on options of the type of Japanese foods you can try. What's worth queuing 15 minutes for is the taiyaki at Tsukiji Sanokiya. Sold in the shape of a tuna, the shop sells different types of taiyaki, named after the different cuts of tuna, with my favorite being the crispy honmakuro. While waiting, we tried a bunch of strawberry sweets from Soratsuki, a place that's heaven for a strawberry lover like me. Yonemoto Coffee is a cafe that's been around since the 1960s, selling a variety of coffee beans from different countries. Personally, I prefer their caramel drinks over their black coffee. Ichi Fuji is another shop that's been here for a while. Since 1951, they've been selling ceramics and tableware at reasonable prices, making it the perfect place to buy souvenirs back home. The next area we headed over to was Setagaya, a peaceful suburban residential area near central Tokyo. The first place I had been hoping to visit for a while now was Gotoguchi Temple, known to be the birthplace of the Maneki Neko, or luck inviting cat. Here you can purchase a lucky cat yourself, write your wishes, and leave them at the cat hall of the temple. Nearby is Shimokitazawa, an edgy neighborhood that's perfect for coffee, thrifting vintage clothes, and vinyl. A cafe I recommend here is Kisare. Their donut was so fluffy, while their pudding made with eggs from the owner's hometown in Miyazaki Prefecture was top notch. A short walk away is Reload, a small community mall filled with restaurants, cafes, shops, a gallery, and a stationery shop. One of the more popular places in Reload is Ogawa Coffee Laboratory, which gives you a choice of over 20 types of coffee beans based on your selected flavor profile on a coffee graph. For the evening, we headed over to the nearby Koenji, where I had dinner at Non, a small minimalistic izakaya that only accepts eight customers per round. This izakaya has a unique choice of sake and a small menu which they cook on the spot for you. We stopped by a cozy Italian restaurant for wine before heading back to a bar in Ginza, close to where we were staying. This basement bar is enchantingly decorated with cocktails that look as if they've been pulled straight out of a fantasy novel. My favorite day trip location from Tokyo is Kamakura, a coastal town just one hour away from Tokyo. Our first very early stop just before the temple start to open was to Verve Coffee Roasters branch in Yukinoshita. It's a great place for pour over coffee and waffles. I visited the nearby Hokoguchi temple one of the best spots to enjoy a peaceful walk in Kamakura. 
As you enter, a beautifully arranged Zen garden lines the path leading up to the main hall. And behind, you will find a spacious Zen garden surrounded by cherry blossom trees and a cluster of over 2,000 bamboo plants. Walking along the bamboo path will eventually lead you to a peaceful tea house, serving matcha amidst the rustling leaves. Next stop was to Hase Station, a scenic location for long walks in town. My choice for lunch was soba at Wagokoro, where we ordered duck soba, their seasonal soba and tempura soba, all of which were served in a stock that was exploding with flavors. During our walk towards the station, we stumbled across Shugenji Temple. Although the temple grounds itself are small, the cherry blossoms in full bloom definitely caught my eye. When in Hase, I can never miss out on having the best cheese tart at the Circus Kamakura, a coffee stand right next to the train tracks, for you to enjoy a nice cup of coffee with their decadent camembert cheese tart. Around this time, Hasidera is known for the viewing of their ume blossoms, which have a darker pink hue as compared to the cherry blossoms. Having visited this temple throughout all four seasons, I'd have to say this early spring season is probably my favorite. In the afternoon, we finally checked in at our Airbnb, a unique two-story vacation home with a beautiful living room on the second floor. Italian food in Kamakura is always a good choice, and so for this trip, we went with Pew Forte. This restaurant has no English menu, so they sort of gave us an Italian omakase experience with a beautiful wine pairing of natural wines from different parts of Europe. We checked out the next morning and made our way to buy bagels at Kodaka's Bagels. After that, I revisited Zenyarai Benten Shrine, a shrine associated with money and success. Occupying a cave where spring water flows through, it is famous for its coin washing ritual that is believed to multiply your wealth. I also visited the shrine that was hidden behind the main area by taking a flight of stairs. It's amazing how I didn't even notice this last time I was here. 
This time, I also bought a Mizumi Kuti, an Omi Kuti, or fortune card that you'll have to float on water to reveal your fortune. Located near Zenyarai Benten, I then visited Sasuke Inari Shrine, a place lined with red tori gates, similar to the Fushimi Inari Shrine in Kyoto, and is also the site of the hidden village of Kamakura. Legend has it that Minamoto Yoritomo, the first shogun of Kamakura, dreamt of an Inari, which translates to a white fox, who advised him of the timing to battle his enemies. When Yoritomo succeeded and became a shogun, Sasuke Inari Shrine was built out of gratitude as a way to honor this messenger. Before making our way back to Tokyo, we stopped by Bergfeld, a bakery I frequently visit for the butter and butterfly cookies. We decided to stop by their cafe next door for some coffee and light bites before heading back. Now back in Tokyo, we made our way to Harajuku for some last minute shopping. While you're there, Harajuku Gyozaro is a great stop for anyone that's craving gyoza. They sell three different flavors, original, garlic, and shiso, wherein which all three tasted so good. For dinner, we headed over to a busy izakaya in the bustling Ginza, run by three ladies. Although all of their menu is in Japanese, my favorites that I would recommend would be their sashimi, karaage, fava bean tempura, clams, and fried oysters. A short walk away was the Choya Ginza Bar, owned by the famous Umeshu brand. Perfect for Umeshu lovers, this bar takes you on a flight of plum wines and cocktails. And my favorite had to be the sparkling Umeshu, which I tried for the first time here. I had a noon flight on my last day, which meant I had to make my way to Narita quite early. So I managed to squeeze in one more cafe before leaving. My last stop of this trip was the atmospheric Hashira Deli and Cafe, a short walk away from Narita JR station, serving light bites, coffee and tea with the cutest latte art. <laughs> 